Welcome to my channel. This is a channel where I turn struggling math students into math masters. I post videos every Tuesday and Thursday, so be sure to subscribe and turn on the bell to get notified when I post any videos. Okay, so in this video, we're going to look at distance, speed and time. It's a fairly simple concept, but the idea is to make this even easier so that when you see it, you have the confidence to take on the question. Um, and the focus is also really on looking at time and just all sort of the, the intricacies that comes with time when you're actually working with distance and speed. All right, so yeah, let's do this. Okay, so in this lesson, like I mentioned, we're going to look at distance, speed and time. Okay, so I'm really going to focus on the areas that sort of are not as clear cut or not as easy. Okay, so we're going to first start, I like to start at the bare basics so that everybody at least knows what we are doing. And then I will go to sort of the more in-depth type of questions. Okay, so let's just first make sure we understand the definition. So if you look at point A and point B, then we'll know that distance is basically asking or referring to how far is A from B. And then the speed would be, would refer to how fast am I moving from point A to point B or from B to point A. And then time is how long is it taking me to travel from point A to point B. So these are the sort of the definitions that you need to be very clear on before you take on and, and go into the sort of intricacies of the section. Okay, so the nice way or the way I explain this to my students is I say the triangle is fairly simple way to really understand this. So if you think of a triangle and whenever there's a distance, speed and time question, I always tell my students draw this triangle. Okay, and um, so the D will always be on top and the ST at the bottom. And essentially what this means is that if, this, if whatever is being asked, right, you always put sort of cover in this triangle. So if I'm being asked distance, I will cover the D and then I'm left with S and T that are next to each other. So if they are next to each other, then that means our calculation is multiply. Okay, if the one is on top of the other, then that means it's divide. So in this case, distance, if I cover the D, would equal speed multiplied by time. Also, if we're now being asked for time, then we will cover the T, and then the calculation will always be the distance over speed. Okay, and then the last one will be the average speed will then be covering S, and then we'll see distance over time. Okay, so these formulas are generally given to you, but what I realize they do, or when they try and sort of trick you and give you sort of more challenging questions is where they'll maybe give you the first formula. So distance equals average speed multiplied by time, and then not ask distance, then they give you the distance and they give you the time and you have to know how to then calculate the average speed. Okay, so I always say this triangle will cover you. You will know what you need to divide and what you need to multiply by what if you actually understand and memorize this triangle. Okay, so now let's actually look at some questions. Okay, but before we look at some questions, I want to just maybe emphasize. And I'm going to, if you look at this, I want you to just always remember when we're looking at units, distance obviously will always be length. So it will be meters, kilometers, um, centimeters, etc. And then the time will always be hours or minutes or seconds. But what speed is, is speed's unit is always dependent on what the distance and the time's unit is. So if my distance is kilometers and my time is hours, then my speed would refer to kilometers per hour. Okay. If my distance was meters and my time was seconds, then it would be meters per second. So S is always, S's units is always a combination of the distance and the time's unit. Okay, now that we got that out of the way, I'm going to do one example of each, okay, where you need to calculate each, and then we're going to sort of look at certain um, sections where sort of things get a little bit challenging and I can just show you how you would actually approach that, that, that specific aspect of the questions. Okay, so 
Tempo travels at 130 kilometers. At travels 130 kilometers at an average speed of 120 kilometers per hour to a work conference. Calculate how long it took him. Obviously, to travel that distance and then give your answer in hours and minutes. Okay, so the calculation is pretty easy. It's where things get tricky is the hours and minutes. So let me show you how you're going to approach this. So firstly, we look at the triangle, right? And the triangle, and, and we look at the triangle, we use the triangle, and we see what is given. So he travels 130 kilometers, so that's our distance, right? He, they give us the average speed, right? So essentially, if I look at my triangle, Right, according to this, it would mean that we have distances in kilometers and the speed they're giving us is kilometers per hour. So we know if we had to anyway do any of these calculations to calculate time, that our answer would then be in hours because the speed is always a combination of distance and time. So because I'm asking, they're asking me for time, I cover the T and then that would mean that it would be D divided by S. Right, so that would mean I'll take the 130 and divide it by the 120. Okay, and that will give me 1.08333 hours. Okay, so usually most students get to this point, it's fine. But now, how do you take this and convert it to hours and minutes? Now, the mistake that most people make, and I'm please asking you <laughs> not to make this mistake, because you don't have to lose these marks. But a lot of kids then will say, okay, this is one hour and 0 0.8333 minutes, which is incorrect, okay? How you're going to do this is the number in front of the decimal will always be your hours. So that will remain the same, okay? But what you need to do is you're going to take the 0 0.0833 what's left and multiply that by 60 because we, get, we have 60 minutes in an hour. Right, so if we multiply it by 60, then we get an answer of 5. And then that is then gives us our minutes. So in essence, Tepo then took 1 hour and 5 minutes to get from, um, to travel to his work conference. Okay, so what did I do here? I took the 1, the 1 is in front of the decimal. So whatever is in front of the decimal remains the hours. And whatever is after the decimal, you then take that value by itself without the hours and multiply it by 60 to find your minutes. Okay, and that's how I got one hour and five minutes. So you see, in essence, the first part is an easy calculation, but it's making sure that you know how to give the answer that's important. In the second example now, we're going to look at um, the scenario. So Tepo travels at 1.2 million meters to visit his mom, right? He travels for 13 hours and 20 minutes. Calculate his average speed. So now we break down what do we have, okay? We've got distance in the question and we've got the time, okay? So based on our triangle, that means if we have distance and time, they are asking us to calculate the speed. And how do we calculate the speed? It's the distance over the time. Now, when we're calculating the average speed, you will remember I mentioned that um, the units should be the same. So if I want to calculate the average speed in the unit they're asking, which is kilometers per hour, then that means my distance needs to be in kilometers and my time needs to be in hours. So that's what we're going to do. We are going to convert the distance into kilometers. Okay, so it's divide by 1,000. And if you're not sure why I divide by a thousand or how to do this conversion, I have a video out on measurements that makes this whole process very easy. Um, it's called Converge. It's got a video called Conversions, and I'll link it in the description below. So, yeah, have a look at that. But I've now converted the meters to kilometers because they want the speed in kilometers per hour. Right? Then I go and I have to convert my 13 hours and 20 minutes into hours so the 13 is already in hours so it's in essence i just need to convert the 20 minutes to hours so how do i do that i say 20 and i divide it by 60 now right to give me 0 0.333 so when i'm going from 
minutes to hours, I divide by 60. And when I'm going from hours to minutes, like in the previous example, I multiply by 60. Okay? Excuse me. All right. So now, if I look, you'll see that my hours is then 13, which is the hours in the question. And then the decimals I'll just apply from when I converted the minutes. So that, all of that is then the total hours. So in order to calculate the speed, I then say 1,200, which is now kilometers, and I divide it by the 13.33333, 13 and I get an answer of an average speed of 90 kilometers per hour. Okay, so that is how you would then calculate the speed. Um, remember, the speed is always the units. It's always a combination of the units of the distance and the time. Okay. Um, yeah. Right. So let's move to one last example. So Tipo, <laughs> and Tipo is very busy. As you can tell, Tipo is traveling very much. <laughs> so Tipo works 31.5 kilometers from home. Okay. And, start, and starts work at half past nine. If he travels at a, uh, a speed of 75 kilometers per hour and gets to work at exactly 9.30, show whether or not he left home at nine. Okay, so if you look at this question, right, again, we ask ourselves, what is given? Okay, so he works 31.5 kilometers from home, so that's our distance, right? Then he travels at a speed of 75 kilometers per hour. So now they want to know, um, if he got to work at exactly half past nine, did he leave at exactly nine o'clock? So we need to calculate the time, right? So again, we've got kilometers and we've got speed and we need to calculate the time. So how do we do this? We know that it's distance divided by speed. So the distance is 31.5 divided by the speed is 75. Ach, sorry, the speed, which is 75, and it gives you 0 0.42 hours. Now again, that, that 0 0.42 is not 42 minutes. This whole value is in hours. So if I want to calculate how many, uh, or if I want to convert this hours into minutes, I'm then going to say 0 0.42 and multiply it by 60, just like we did in example one, to give us 25.2 minutes. So essentially, he traveled for only 25.2 minutes, right? So did he leave at 9 o'clock or did he leave a little bit after 9? So if you look from 9 till 9.30 is a 30 minutes, but he only traveled for 25.2 minutes. So what does that mean? That means that he left just a little bit after 9 o'clock. Okay, so an, a way to show this calculation is you'll say if he left home at 9.30, uh, sorry, if he got to work at 9.30 and you subtract the 25.2 minutes, then that means he gets home. He left at about 9 o'clock and 0 0.48 minutes. Okay, so that's just doing the subtraction calculation there. Okay, so I'm saying 30, just the minutes, the 30 minutes minus the 25.2 minutes which will then give us the 04.8 minutes, which rounded off will then be 9.05. So he left five minutes past nine. He didn't leave at exactly nine o'clock. Okay, so this is just one way where they can take a simple concept and really just sort of spin the question in such a way that you have to answer it and apply what you've answered in, in the way we have in this question. Okay, so let's just give you quickly a recap. Again, we have to know that we use the triangle, the distance on top, and speed and time next to each other. Whatever they're asking, you cover, and then whatever is left, you do the operation. So if, they, if they're asking distance, you cover the D, and what's left is speed and time, which means you multiply S and T because they're next to each other. If they ask you speed, you cover the speed and what's left is distance over time. And so um, you'll then say distance divided by time. Okay, 
And that's how you will approach these questions to make sure you know when to add, uh, when to divide, and when to multiply. That being said also, you have to remember how to convert um, minutes and when something's actually in hours with decimals, how to take that and convert it to hours and minutes. And then if something's in hours and minutes, you have to know how to convert that back into just hours. Okay? And then you have to just make sure that you are always reading the questions properly so that you are actually able to understand what they're asking so that you can apply what you've learned in this video to actually answer the questions that they're asking. Okay. Yeah. Best of luck for this section. And I hope I made this a little bit easier for you. All right. So that's the end of the video. Um, I hope that you found it helpful. And... Yeah, if you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. And if you have any questions or if you want me to, you know, make a video on any specific topic, feel free to add it in the comment section below and I'll try my best to make sure that I can make it for you. Um, yeah, and thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.